Hello, everyone. Today is April 15th, 2024, and I am Red Wibat. <laughs> uh, Miss Can't Be Wrong, thank you. How you doing, Frank? Benjamin, hello. <laughs> you thought I was a party animal back in the day. I was. I was. Hush, dog. <laughs> Kevin, good to see you. Mr. Nibbles, how you doing? Star Wars, what's up, Red? Hope you're doing well. I am. Rhonda, my Italian cowgirl, how you doing? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. I really do have some stories to tell. I was thinking about them, <laughs> saying, should I tell them? Because it was like, I don't know, it was difficult. <laughs> I had different standards. Uh, back in the day, This can't be wrong. Some I might be too. I'm not too embarrassed to tell you any of my my partying days. So that that doesn't embarrass me at all. I can tell you about falling up the stairs instead of falling down the stairs <laughs> to get home. That's just the way it was. Hello, Corey. How you doing, buddy? I suppose we all did have our moments, but I was kind of tame. Uh, I like my scotch. I definitely like my scotch. No doubt about that. But back in the days, there were other people that liked wacky tobacco. Lots of them. And there were people that liked MDA. They loved to go to mothers and just dance and it just, that's the way it was. It was crazy. <laughs> it would be a short book. If I wrote a book on that, it would be a very short book. Probably maybe 10 pages or so. <laughs> yes, it was free love back then. Things were a lot different. Then. They didn't have um, hepatitis C. They didn't have AIDS. They didn't have a lot of things back in those days. And life was a lot simpler. It was a lot of fun. But when you picked up a date, you didn't have to worry about picking up anything else. <laughs> um, it, was, um, it was a time for me. First of all, I, got, I never got weaned off the bottle when I got out of the Marine Corps. So I like my scotch. I like my beer. I liked all my drink. But I never did uh, get into the wacky tobacco scene. It was offered to me many times. It was very popular back in that time. And uh, I just said no. Uh, never had a real desire for it. Uh, I also had uh, the words of uh, Marshall Cafano and Joy Lombardo telling me, don't ever do it. And I was a listener, not a feeler. And I did what I did. But party, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rush Street. Kraut, how you doing, buddy? Bill Karschmeyer. This can't be wrong. I'm a late in life uh, stoner. Long story. Well, I don't think mine's that long. After um, eight years after I retired from Chicago, 
uh, I was at a neighbor, my next door neighbor's house. I had stopped home and uh, I was out, uh, I was out drinking that night. I was on Clamata Street. Uh, and then I was on uh, in City Place in, in Palm Beach, in West Palm Beach, just over the bridge. There's no place to party in Palm Beach, I'll tell you that much. At any rate, um, I had quite a bit to drink. And when I got home, the lights were on next door. And it was my next door neighbor. And so I went over there. And uh, he was burning him in light all. Knocked on the door. Rang the doorbell. And uh, the lights were on, like I said. So he comes to the door. He lets me in. And I didn't realize it, but he was half-baked. And he sat down. There were several other people there that were watching motocross. He was a motorcycle nut. And while they were watching the motocross and everything, everything was, I could smell something in the air. And uh, I wasn't really sure, but I thought it was marijuana. I really did. So uh, I sat down. We were talking. We were talking about other things. All of a sudden, uh, I noticed on an end table next to me, there was a, a little pipe about maybe that long. Here we got Adam to measure for me. <laughs> I'll put it up there, folks. About that long. And uh, it had a brass bowl on it. And it had a little brass rod and a little thing on the end. But it had a wooden piece over the, the shaft in the middle. And I looked at him and I looked at, at the pipe and I said, what is that? And he reached over like, snatched it. And I said, what is it? And he said, oh, nothing. I said, well, I, why are you hiding it then? And she said, I'm not hiding it. He opens up the drawer and he tries to put it in the drawer. And I said, can I see that, please? And so he said, well, yeah, if you really want to. So he gives it to me and I look at it. And I said, how does this thing work? You don't want to know. Really, Red, you don't want to know. And I said, yeah, I do want to know. I wouldn't ask if I didn't want to know. I'm asking you, how does it work? So he showed me the carburetor on the side. And he explained it to me. And I said, you got anything to go in this thing? And he said, yeah, but you don't want to try that. He, he said, uh, no. Well, we went through the same thing. Finally, he got it. He, got it, uh, he packed the bolt. And he lit it. And boy, did I feel relaxed. I mean, my, num my lips went numb. My throat started getting numb. My cheeks were getting numb. And my shoulders, you know, my I had stress in my shoulders. And all that stuff was getting numb. And I felt really good. And then he said, you know, when you do that, you got you to gotta puff in, you know, get it going and let go of the carburetor and just puff all that in. And he said, keep it in your lungs. Hold it as long as you can. And I said, okay. And I went over and he held the carburetor for me. And I puffed on it, and man, this time I really got a load. I mean, I really got a load. And I coughed a little bit. And he laughed. And the other people that were there were laughing at me. One of the gals there was Julie, and she was laughing. Her boyfriend, uh, JT, he was laughing. My next-door neighbor that lived there, he was... He was kind of laughing, too. But all of a sudden, I realized something. I was getting numb in my arms, in my toes. And then it hit me. I had a real bad problem. Here I am in a suit and tie. And I have something that could be embarrassing going on. So I think about it for a few minutes and I say, okay, how do I get out of here? And I got up, I hugged the couch all the way out and get out the door. And the next morning when I woke up, I got home and I, was, 
I was, I went right to bed. Next morning when I woke up, I said, uh, hmm, call my next door neighbor. And he said, <laughs> he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. And <laughs> I said, where do you get this stuff? And he said, uh, oh, I buy it. And I said, well, I want to buy some. And he said, you really don't want to do that. And I said, don't tell me what I want to do. I, I just had had it with people telling me what I want to do. I knew what I wanted to do. And so he said, well, how much do you want to get? I said, oh, maybe a pound. He said, a pound? He said, I get half an ounce. He said, a pound? I didn't know anything. What was I going to know? I didn't know anything about it. He was buying it in uh, half ounce, uh, sometimes a quarter, or it was, what, 14 grams, and sometimes it was seven grams. But anyway, I learned. So there was a kid in the neighborhood. I looked like a cop. What can I tell you? Nobody would sell anything to me. There was a kid in the neighborhood, and I called him over. I said, I want you to go buy this for me. He said, okay, how much? And I said, about a pound. He said, no, 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 you don't want a pound. He said, my guy would never sell me a pound. He doesn't have it. And I said, okay, well, get as much as you can then. I said, how much money? And I'll give him the money. And uh, I think I gave him um, $200. And at that time, hydroponics were selling for $200 an ounce. No, that was a half ounce. It was $400 for an ounce. So he came back with a small amount. And, yeah, it worked. It was okay. But I knew I had to find somebody else, and I did. There was a guy that, uh, Albert, uh, he came to my home. Nice guy. He didn't want me going by his house. And he always came in. A, he, he drove a Mercedes, and he came in a, a suit and tie. And he, wore, he had an attache case. He came into the house. He'd open up the house open, or open up the attache case. Inside the attache case, he'd have some Panama red. He'd have all these different kinds of flavors. And um, he'd give me the price tags. And he sold to me wholesale, which is a lot cheaper. I mean, I was buying it for maybe $190 an ounce at that time. And it was good. It was also hydroponic wasn't dirt weed. So that's what happened to me at 48 years old. And to this day, uh, when I talk to my next door neighbor that used to be my next door neighbor, when we talk on the phone, uh, he says, I was so sorry that I corrupted you. And I keep explaining to him, he never corrupted me. Or if I tell somebody else a story that I just told the whole world on YouTube, uh, it is what it is. Did I enjoy it? Yeah. Do I enjoy it? Yeah. But not every morning, not every day. And I don't go outside. I'm not driving around in my car all messed up. I'm doing what I'm doing. So that's that part. The rest of it was my scotch and the parties I went to, the places I went. One thing that I did avoid was uh, there was an apartment in uh, Lake Point Towers that was, uh, it was actually owned by the uh, Teamsters Union. And Marshall Cofano stayed there for a while. It was an interim place for people to stay when they got to Chicago until they found their own home, their own place to live. And in between that time, uh, Philly Cozo, Jimmy Cozo's son, used to throw a lot of uh, parties. And that's where he'd throw them. And the place was really decked out. I mean, it was a gorgeous place. But I go up there for a party, 
because he said he was throwing a party. And I figured, oh, I'll go with some of the younger guys instead of hanging out with the old, you know, the fathers and everything. These guys were a couple of years younger than me. Not, you know, they're close to my age, though. I figured, oh, I'll, I'll go out with, you know, them and meet some of the nice girls and whatever. And when I got up there, I parked my car. I get up there. At the door, he's passing. Everybody that goes through the door, open your mouth. And he was giving him a quaalude. And I said, this isn't going to be a party. This is going to be a mess. And I'm not taking no drugs because, believe me, I hadn't touched anything that a doctor hadn't prescribed for me. It's usually an antibiotic or something like that. But that's one party that I avoided. Really, I avoided that a lot. Temperoni. You remember uh, smoking a Thai stick back in Vietnam. Um, you know, I was very critical of the guys that did smoke over there because they got dopey. And when I say dopey, they were dopey. And I thought they might get us killed. And I also thought to myself, if I, I don't want to be drunk, I don't want to be high. I don't want to be anything because I want to, I want to get home. That's what I want to do. That's the way it was. He did, he did me a favor. I can only smoke at night. Never in the day either. Roy. <laughs> uh, Brother smokes, Jays like their cigarettes. <laughs> uh, but he can't be dependent, dependent on if I'm high to post a, a letter. Never mind, drive. Yeah, I'm the same way, Roy. Really, I am. How's the weather over there? <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. No, it doesn't leave me with good judgment. It leaves me with, I laugh a lot. I mean, I laugh a lot. If you think I laugh now, you should see me when I'm high. <laughs> Adam Adam said a couple times when we talked on the phone in the evening, he said, Red, if we ever went on the air like this, what do you think people would say? And I said, I have no idea, but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh So that's what my party days were like, kind of, while I was partying. And it lasted through the uh, 70s, actually the end of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, all the way through. And then when I got to Florida, first thing I did was go to a place called uh, American Bandstand. I was in Sarasota. It was by the Sarasota Quay. Foolish Lock. No, you can't. Uh, Quaaludes uh, were taken off the market, and doctors can't even prescribe them. They're not available. It's spilling rain, and the wind is unreal. Brad, you got to go unless I'll go with you one day. Ah, uh, Roy. It is 86 degrees here. I have the air conditioning out of my home. And I'd say it's a nice day out. Nice blue sky. I don't even have the other lamp on in here. It's looking pretty good for me. Tracy, how you doing? How you doing, darling? Yeah, my partying days were good party days. But I see a lot of embarrassed people in the uh, in the chat that you don't even want to talk about your party days. <laughs> Six degrees centigrade. Ay. Not good. 72 in Chicago. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Ben Kandari. Kandari. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, guy. 
I do my best. I really do. I. Yes, I need a mat for the bottom of this, uh, a plastic mat. Something that'll uh, that'll work. You know how life is. Well, I think you know how life is. <laughs> uh, Prancy Brainy, that butcher boy. Where? <laughs> Roy, uh, Roy Munson says, my party days are coming to an end. Uh, I'm still wrecked after Sunday night. <laughs> it wasn't like you were in your 20s, man. It's different now. It really is. Kevin. Redheart. Red Heart, you smoked your way through the 70s, and you knew MDA and Quaaludes, too. Okay. Well, you made it. Here you are. Tracy must uh, trust me. Shopping trolleys toss me and <laughs> not go anywhere. <laughs> Uh, can't ride if you're fried. Motorcycles are fun when sober. I don't think I, I could do anything like that. I'm not coordinated. I, you know, when I found out is back when I lived, uh, I lived in Palm Beach. Right after I, I, I was, uh, I had a bunch of people over at the house. I had a pool party. I had a bunch of people over at the house and I couldn't make any food. So um, I said, come on, we'll order some food. Now go pick it up. And I jumped in my car and I went there and we got the food. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what we got, but it was bags of it. And I brought it back. And as I was leaving the parking lot, I squealed the tires a little bit. Two of the people in the car freaked out. They said, you know, that's a copter. And I said, ah, screw him. And I just floored it. I was doing maybe 110, 150 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone on the way home. And when I got home, I was laughing. And when I got home, they all told me, I don't think it's good if you drive when you're, you know, smoking. And I agreed. And believe me, I haven't, after I, I looked at myself and saw what I did, and uh, I really insulted the cop. And lucky I didn't get stopped. Very lucky. I had a, I had a good luck. Uh, thank to me. Michael Hacker. You rode your Harley to Wilmington and, and Morris Day. Michael, what kind of Harley you got? Or did you have? I had a 59 FLH that I rode back in the 60s. Full dress hawk. And I used to take it down to Daytona. I went to uh, Mardi Gras. Anything to get out of the, uh, the cold weather up north. Enough talk. Tracy, you were born in 1970. You don't know what you missed. You have no idea what you missed. Oh, you had the Road King. 1745 cc's. That thing was bored and stroked. Yeah. I only had 1500 cc's. It was 84 cubic inches. Originally, it was factory. It was 74. But 
after I knocked, there was 1,200 cc's at 74. At 84, it knocked me up to 15. And I didn't have a six speed. I only had a four speed. But it was a running son of a gun, man. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. That bike represented freedom to me at one time. George Wilson, I still want to trike when I win the lottery. I got you, George. I understand. Alvin, how you doing, buddy? You always felt like a soul born in the wrong decade. You're right. You were. Just enjoy it while you got it. And 55 is good. That was a good time. Riding horses does keep you young. Anything that keeps you moving around is good. Well, Michael, I have not kept up with the bikes over the years. I really haven't. <laughs> Crazy. Your 20s were a blur. I'll tell you what was a blur for me. My 40s, they were a blur. Between 40 and 50, man, it just passed. And I did a lot of drinking. And I did a lot of partying. And I had some good times. When I when I was working all those days in Chicago and nights, or whatever, seven days a week, no vacation. After 20 some odd years, when I finally did get away and get to Florida, for the first five years, I did nothing but party every day. I go out on a boat, I do something, big boats. Boats you can sleep on, you know, ships. No, they were boats, yachts. But I go out and party. I party my, it was like the thing to do. I wanted to catch up for all the things I missed. Tracy, it's exactly, she. she's not lying. Roy, that's it. She's not lying. Bill Kirschmeyer, the Kraut. My first Harley was a 77 Super Glide 1200. It got stolen. And then came a 77 XLH. Those XLs were something else. That was a Sportster, yeah. And it, I don't know, those 77. Did you have electric start then? I don't think they had electric start then in 77. Did they, Bill? Or Kraut? I know there was something uh, that was real crazy with the... Uh, they kicked like a mule, those uh, XLHs, the Sportsters. They were neat. The 84 Softail, 13. Yeah, 80, oh, 80 cubic inches is 13. I thought it was 15, Bill. But you're probably right. I know it wasn't 12. Mine was born out to 84. You're, you had your board to 80. Okay. Red, did I ever party with Tony? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tony, Tony and I get really sloshed together. I mean, really sloshed together. We both liked our scotch. And we tell stories and laugh into the morning. When the sun came up, it was a good company, a very good company. Hey, Chris, how you doing, guy? Good to see you. Chris says, hi, everyone. 
Okay, all you nice people that are in here, do me a favor. Hit that like button. I need all the help I can get, please. <laughs> Not only that, I came on today on a Monday to be with you folks. That's the reason. And my voice isn't exactly in the right place. Uh, I've got, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. There's, there's stuff in the air today. It's like uh, pollen. And uh, that was something else. Michael Hacker. Uh, Red, did you ever ride the Star of Rock? Um, yes, I did. I did ride down to Star of Rock. And uh, what kind of scotch? Uh, Royal Salute. That's all I drank was Royal Salute. 21-year-old scotch. Uh, done deal. Red, was there a connected friend you could take to a party without worrying about unintended incidents? Unintended incidents. I had a lot of friends I went to parties. And I, would, I don't know what you mean by unintended incidents. Something happening, somebody saying something. That always happened. When I was drunk, I didn't care. If somebody said something to me, it didn't bother me. It could be the most insulting comment. And I'd just say, <laughs> I'd walk away. Deborah Day, hello from California, the new scum state. Okay. Sorry, Deborah. God's sake. All this weekend has got me rolling now. Cheers, Red. Cheers to you, buddy. Roy Runson. Burn one for me, Roy. I'm at work <laughs> with the other smoke, the crowd. <laughs> the limp, limp biscuit style? I don't know what that is, guy. Tim Peroni, what musical bands did I ever see? Oh, I went to the Rosemont Horizon a few times. And I saw Billy Joel there. Uh, I saw the Three Dog Night. Uh, who else did I see? A lot of bands. A lot of bands. I mean, if there was something, I got free tickets for it through Ticket Trump. So I never had to pay for them. A lot of times I get them and I give them to other people. Or I, somebody would come to me and say, can I get this? And I get it for them. The Doobie Brothers, they played at Kurt at Valley View, uh, yeah, the Doobie Brothers. Rhonda. So I did see them uh, for two sets a night <laughs> because I had to be there to go all the way through them. The rock band is called They Got Me Rolling. I've never heard of them. <laughs> Tony Taco, you're a Glenn Fetish guy. I like Glenn Fetish. That's a single malt scotch. And uh, I like single malts, but not when I'm really, I mean, it's a sipping whiskey. It's very nice. I like it. It's a very smooth uh, single malt. But if I'm drinking, I really like my uh, my Royal Salute. It's it's something that I've been drinking for over 50 years, guy. More than a number. 
You're working so you can't watch much, but I'll support you by signing in when you're live. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, buddy. Uh -huh. I, mess I left you a message, Luke. I, I, I sent you another email. I just want to know the name of your wife. <laughs> and still referring her to as your lady. Uh, I like to refer to her by name instead of saying your wife, your lady, whatever. So I just did. Loading the vape now. Okay. I like the three dog night. I love the three dog night. It was one of my favorite groups. There's so many that I love though. I mean, there really is the who, the guess who rather. Uh, there's just so many. The who were great. They were laughing. It was one of their songs. Beautiful song. Got me going. I'm trying to think of the name of that song. You got me going. Not the real, not the band, the kinks. I saw a lot of kinky people, but I never saw the kinks. <laughs> The Doobie Brothers, yes, I did. I saw the Doobie Brothers several times. They were good. Very good. Yeah, Johnny, if I'd have been high in uh, Sam DiStefano's basement, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I really wouldn't. I never saw uh, the Rolling Stones, and I never saw Stevie Wonder. I did see the Chicago, a band Chicago. Yes, I did see them one time. I used to listen to them all the time, but I only saw them once. That was Pete Chevrolet's band. He was their manager. He also destroyed them. That's one thing about weed. You don't get a hangover from weed. You do from uh, uh, liquor, though, and beer, and anything that's sweet, liqueurs, you know, Galliano, Trambouille. That's why I don't like rusty nails or things like that, because they'll knock me out. And uh, I won't pick up the next day either. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Um, and that was a black group, and it was good. They were very good, Mike. I'm, I'm trying to think of our name, and I can't. Temptations. Frank Ferrero's got it. He's right on top of it. It was. Yes, I saw Jimi Hendrix, too, in concert. You know where I saw Jimi Hendrix in concert? <laughs> You're going to laugh. It was 1969. It was in New York. It was at Woodstock. I'm one of the people that made it to Woodstock. And here I am. Arlo Guthrie. He was good. The city of New Orleans. There were a lot of songs. I, I went, there were so many. It's, it's just. But I, I related to music a lot. And uh, the four tops, they were good. Not in concert. I never saw him in concert. I did see him once uh, out by, uh, yeah, one, uh, twice out by uh, Whitehaven. That's what they called the area back then when I was stationed in Memphis. The motorcycle song, I don't want to pickle. I'm not familiar with that one, man. I 
I don't really know where they were from. Uh, I know they played the uh, uh, the Erie Crown Theater, but I don't know where they were from. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end, but they did. <laughs> it was the end. Yes, I partied hardy. Very hardy. Led Zeppelin. Yes. He was high on my list, too. St. Charles, where, where was the, uh, where, where, what concert, where did they play in St. Charles? Okay. I think Tracy got your message. Arcadia, Arcadia Theater. Okay. They were good days, folks. I'm sure you guys had your, your time, and I had mine too. For any of you that partake in the devil's cabbage, um, when you look back at your youth, are you sorry that you did? Did it help you party? Suddenly it went silent. <laughs> Tommy Bartlett show at the Dells. Man, you're showing your age, Tim. <laughs> Yes, the Utes. And that was a dance. The James Brown. And you're right, Frank. It's called Living America. That's okay, Ben. He always corrects me, too. You're not bad. <laughs> Oh, you're not bad. You're one of us. You joined, you came here to have fun, and I hope you're having fun. I'm laughing. I'm having fun. The only thing I can't do is play music in the background. If I play music in the background, I get demonetized. They'd say, oh, goodbye. You just, you know, stole the music from somebody else. <laughs> But I want to thank all you folks for coming by and uh, putting up with my, my throat the way it is. And uh, I'll probably, I got to talk to Adam. He's going to, as soon as I call Adam, he's going to say, okay, Red, what are we doing uh, Wednesday? Because he doesn't know yet. But I know. I know what we're doing Wednesday. So I will see you on my vlog. And uh, thank you all for coming by. And God bless you. Red, we met out. <laughs> ah. The combination of the videotapes and we met's testimony resulted in the conviction of two men on extortion charges. One of them was Frank Schweiz, known in syndicate circles as the German, a feared mob terrorist and a suspect in a number of gangland murders. He was described to me by other outfit individuals as uh, 
the most feared hitman. And uh, as he said to me, my reputation precedes me, son.